Activist Radio is on the air. You have tuned in to the Mark Harrington Show, sponsored by Created Equal. Mark is training a new generation of leaders to take on the culture of death and win. You don't like abortion, don't have one. The only thing that can be said to be objective truth is that there is no objective truth. It does come out in one piece. It comes out in one piece. I would argue that we certainly are not all created equal. And now, here's Mark. Welcome to your radio activist here, Mark Harrington, live here on uh, Facebook and other social media platforms. Coming to you from Columbus, Ohio, the heart of it all here in Ohio. And uh, we're going to be talking about the heartbeat bill and how that is historic and what happened in uh, Washington, D.C. yesterday. And uh, we're going to be we're going to be talking about why that's historic. Now, I want you to stick around. I've got some really awesome video clips from the hearing yesterday in Washington. And we're going to unpack those video clips and it's going to teach a couple things. First of all, it's going to teach us that images work. Number one. Number two. It's going to teach us these video clips that I'm going to show you from the House Judiciary Committee hearing yesterday on the heartbeat bill. That is H.R. 490. It's going to teach us, number two, that pro-abortion advocates in Congress are snobs and science deniers. That's, well, number two and three, I guess. Number two is that they're snobs. And number three is that they're science deniers. And then fourthly. What these video clips are going to show us is that history is repeating itself. You know, we often say never again. Well, it's happening again here in America. So let's jump right in to the Mark Harrington Show. Folks, stick around. Stay with us. We got some awesome video clips, some historical evidence coming from Washington, D.C. History was made yesterday when the federal heartbeat bill was introduced, H.R. 490 into the Judiciary Committee on uh, in the U.S. House of Representatives. Now, why do I say it's historic? For two reasons. First of all, it's the first time the heartbeat bill has ever been introduced in Congress. Now, people say, well, there's been other bills that are restrictive, as restrictive or more restrictive than the heartbeat bill. There used to be, you know, bills uh, introduced way back in the 1980s that tried to recognize human life, a conception. But in the last 10 or 15 or 20 years, there's never been a bill introduced in Congress that I'm aware of that is as restrictive as the heartbeat bill. Now, I realize it doesn't go all the way. It doesn't ban every abortion from conception. I get that. And a lot of people, uh, or I shouldn't say a lot, but a few, uh, that's one of their main uh, objections to the heartbeat bill from a pro-life perspective but it ends 92% of all abortions. That's pretty restrictive. And that was introduced in the House Judiciary Committee yesterday. Uh, The second reason it's historic is because of this testimony you're going to watch and how we look back at history and we see it repeating itself in several ways. First of all, all the deniers, the people that denied the Holocaust, you know, those same types of people are denying what's happening to preborn babies. Uh, so we're going to talk about that and the connections between the Holocaust and abortion. Now, I've got some history with the heartbeat bill. I was one of the first to jump on board in 2011 when Janet Folger Porter introduced this bill into the Ohio legislature. In 2011, we stood on the south side of the Ohio State House on the steps of the Ohio State House introducing the first heartbeat bill to the Ohio legislature. And it was the first heartbeat bill that had ever been introduced in the entire country. And I stood on the steps and boldly proclaimed that this had to be done now. And if you stick with us through the program, I'm going to show a a clip of my speech of 2011. Now, it's also historic because just last year, the heartbeat bill, after five years of battling back and forth in the Ohio legislature, it came one 
signature away from being law in the state of Ohio. Governor Kasich vetoed the heartbeat bill uh, last year in 2016 uh, when it was brought to his desk. So the, the thing we started in 2011 in the state legislature got to the, the governor's desk in 2016, and now it's going national. An attempt to ban uh, abortion at the detection of a fetal heartbeat has now been introduced into Congress, uh, and that is the federal level. In the U.S. House of Representatives and the, U, uh, the U.S. House Judiciary Committee uh, heard testimony yesterday. You know, I don't think, well, you know, it's qu maybe coincidental or maybe providential that yesterday uh, the Ohio heartbeat bill was also uh, given a hearing at the U.S. or at the Ohio State House. So got a lot happening on this heartbeat bill, and uh, we're going to be talking about it here today on the Mark Harrington Show with the video clips that go along with it. So, so here's what we want to do. We're going to show several video clips. The first video clip we're going to show you is the uh, uh, Representative Steve Smith, who is the chairman of the Judiciary Committee. He plays for the committee in ultrasound. We're going to play that. Then later on in the uh, program, we're going to show video of Trent Franks, Representative Trent Franks from Arizona, talking about um, you know whether it's humane to dismember a baby and getting the representative from the other side, the abortion advocate there to basically admit she thinks it's humane to dismember children. And then finally, and the one that made more news than anything else was the uh, sharing from Star Parker. Star Parker is a pro-life activist, a, an African-American female, and she shared how the Dred Scott decision tracked almost uh, line by line with Roe versus Wade. And because of that, she gets rebuked, uh, shouted down, if you will, from a pro-abortion congressman. So those are the clips we're going to play for you today, and I'm going to unpack them as we go. So Mr. Producer, if you would, what we want to do is cue up that video. Now, keep in mind, this is the Heartbeat Protection Act. That's the name it's been given, H.R. 490 in the U.S. House of Representatives, getting a hearing yesterday. And Representative Steve Smith, who is the chairman of that committee, committee introduces the first witness. And that witness is a baby himself by the name of Lincoln Miller, who's in utero, and he plays this video clip. Go ahead and play that if you would. See his face and his hands. There's his arm and his face. Mm -hmm. Wonder if Lincoln's gonna move that arm and show us how active he can be. Pretty sure McKenzie knows how active he is. There's a good shot at him. Looks like Rocky on the top of the steps. <laughs> Move that arm, will you, Lincoln? Show us how busy you are and how you're exercising now. There you go. Suck your thumb. Okay. Get a little hiccup. Well, that thumb's good, but I... Can't wait to be born and see what this world's like out here. There he is again. Is he, is he talking to us? Yeah, I've been <laughs> <laughs> Little guy. Are you just I love how, if you would, now, he's he's munching up up there. I love how uh, Representative Steve Smith treats the testimony of the preborn baby, Lincoln Miller, as a person. I love how he interacts with the video of the ultrasound of Lincoln Miller. And I, I can guarantee you, and we're going to see this in a second, that the pro-abortion committee members are grinding their teeth and gnashing their teeth as they're watching the video. Is there any denial? that the baby in the womb is a baby when you watch an ultrasound. There is no denial of that. There cannot be. And those that do, as I've said on numerous occasions on this uh, program, on this, this, this podcast and, and this Facebook program, that the real science deniers are the abortion advocates. 
who deny what they see on the screen. And in fact, they deny it to the degree that they won't even look at the video. Mr. Producer, if you would, this photo was captured during the the uh, the showing of Lincoln Miller's ultrasound uh, video during the hearing. And if you look, they're circled. The two pro the pro abortion female on the committee, the Democrat there, uh, in, in the center of the the picture, is looking away, and then. The abortion advocate, who supposedly, I think she's a, a lawyer, uh, one Ivy League school or what have you, are both looking away. Science deniers, deniers of the truth of abortion and the truth of the preborn in the womb. This is what we have on the other side, folks. This is how they win. They deny that it, the baby's a baby. They deny abortion is an act of violence that kills a baby. And they've been doing it for 45 years and they've been getting away with it. It's similar to what skinheads do today when they deny the Holocaust. They say it never happened. It's similar to the, to the, to the uh, citizens of Auschwitz and Birkenau who were forced by the United States Army to go into the death camps after liberation and walk by the piled, uh, the Jews who were piled like cordwood. And you see them in those photos turning away and averting their gaze and putting their hands up against their face and eyes so they don't have to look at what they tolerated for so many years. History was made yesterday in Washington, D.C. by the introduction of the heartbeat bill for the first time and the fact that we treat abortion like we do, uh, many people do the Holocaust to deny it happened. And they deny today that abortion is happening. And just as the science deniers and the deniers of the personhood of, of, of German Jews in the Holocaust were held accountable at Nuremberg, there will come a day that these folks that were turning away when they were uh, shown video of uh, an ultrasound, a preborn baby named Lincoln Miller, will be held accountable in a Nuremberg type trial that'll be held in America sometime soon in the future when this Holocaust of abortion ends. That's why history was made yesterday in Washington, DC, because the deniers denied uh, abortion, just like the deniers denied the Holocaust in the 1940s. So history is repeating itself here in America. Thank God for the that Janet Porter has introduced this bill. And thank God that she and, and Representative Steve Smith had the courage to play this video. Now, the video is of a preborn baby in an ultrasound. And I say that and kudos for that because it, it represents the baby in the womb. And many people think that, you know, that 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 evidence and, and you know uh, that evidence, uh, video evidence, changes people's minds on abortion. And there are statistics that show that a majority of women, if shown an ultrasound prior to abortion, will choose not to abort if seen if they get to see their preborn baby. This is true. This is true. And most pro-lifers think that it's appropriate to show ultrasound images uh, out in public or to show them in a crisis pregnancy center counseling or uh, to show still images of a preborn baby. Most pro-life people believe that that's entirely appropriate and very effective to show the life in the womb. But many of those same pro-life advocates will say, but it's inappropriate to show abortion victim photos or video. And I, I ask this question, if it's appropriate to show a preborn baby in the womb through ultrasound or still photos, and it's effective to do that, to change hearts and minds and to convince women to keep their babies or, and to raise them or bring them to term, then why isn't it appropriate to show victim photos of preborn babies who have been killed by abortion in the womb? Uh, what's going on here? Uh, if, it, if it were to show preborn babies who have been born or being born uh, or in the womb, why isn't it appropriate to show victim photos who have been killed by abortion? Uh, you know, and, and people, I, we get this often. We get people say, you know, why don't you just show preborn children uh, at your displays? Isn't that going to be enough? 
And the answer is no. The answer is no. It'd be like saying, isn't it enough to talk about and, and teach about the Holocaust to show Jewish children at a bar mitzvah to prove that they're persons? The answer is no. You have to show the Holocaust. You have to show the death camps. You have to show Jews being killed and lined up uh, uh, in firing squads and shot in the head and thrown into to death pits. That's necessary. It's not enough to just show live children in the womb. You must show the victims. And if it's effective to show live children in the womb, then it's effective to show children that have been killed by abortion. Most Americans understand that the preborn baby's a baby in the womb. They just don't understand how violent and unjust abortion is itself. And so that's why we need to show the victims of abortion too. Now, I'm happy that they showed the ultrasound, but wouldn't it have been more powerful to also show an abortion procedure at six weeks, six, eight, nine weeks, where there is a detectable heartbeat? Uh, wouldn't that have been something? Now, that would have, that would have put, made shock waves across America. So we've got this ultrasound video. We've got the abortion advocates looking away, the science deniers who don't want to realize or admit that the preborn's a baby is a baby uh, at conception. And then we have this whole thing of never again. Uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and play the video of, of Trent Franks, Representative Trent Franks from Arizona. And what he does here is, is masterful. He talks about the witness of the ultrasound image of Lincoln, uh, Lincoln Miller. And he talks about how that was probably the most powerful testimony he's ever heard in all his years in Congress. And then he turns to the abortion representative and asks him, or, or her, sorry, asks her, if dismembering a baby in utero is inhumane. Go ahead and play that clip. A lot of testimony over the years uh, in this committee, but I, I think I've never heard a more eloquent testimony than that little baby up on the screen. Uh, the heartbeat there should be able to speak to the hardest heart. And, uh, you know, I'm also a little bewildered when people tell me that uh, the subject of today's hearing is somehow uh, diminished and it is not as important as all these other things that we do. And yet it goes to the very heart of who we are as a human family. And um, it also goes to the heart of who we are as Americans. You know, we once held certain truths to be self-evident, that we're all created, and that's what makes us equal. And that we are endowed by our creator with the unalienable right to live. And that to secure these rights, that's why governments exist. So this goes to the heart of every reason that we're here in this place. So for someone to diminish it uh, seems rather sad. The question I ask myself uh, this morning uh, are as follows. I mean, do the words of the Declaration of Independence still apply? Uh, are, are we still someone that hold, a group that holds certain truths to be self-evident? Um, are these really little babies? That's a big one. Is there really a God and what if these little helpless human beings really are his children those are questions to me that have great significance in my heart and so my question for you Miss Smith today is that uh, as you know you've previously uh, appeared before this committee on September 9th 2015 Mrs. Smith is during, the abortion during, during that hearing advocate. you said the following you said quote I believe for a pre-viable fetus that a DNA procedure is a very human procedure, a humane procedure, excuse me, a very humane procedure, unquote. Now, I, I want to read to you, if I can, uh, how Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy has described such a procedure using the testimony of an abortionist named Carhart. He said, quote, the fetus can be alive at the beginning of the dismemberment process and can survive for a time while its limbs are being torn off. Dr. Carhart agreed that, quote, when you pull out a piece of the fetus, let's say an arm or a leg, and remove that, 
At the time just prior to removal of the portion of the fetus, the fetus is alive. Dr. Carhart has observed fetal heartbeat via ultrasound with extensive parts of the fetus, quote, removed, and testified that mere dismemberment of a limb does not always cause death because he knows of a physician who removed the arm of a fetus only to have the fetus go on to be born as a living child with one arm. And at the conclusion of a DNA abortion, no intact fetus remains. In Dr. Har Carhart's words, the abortion is left, the abortionist is left with a tray full of pieces. So Mrs. Smith, and I'd like Dr. Altman to answer the question afterwards as well. So Mrs. Smith, uh, is it still your opinion that a DNA abortion is humane? A DNA abortion is not what we're talking about here. This is that's a bill that oh, yeah. change the subject at six weeks of pregnancy when early medication. But my abortion. question, Ms. Smith, and if you don't want to answer it, I understand. I'm I can happy move to on. answer the question is, as well. You, but you I'm said that you said in your last testimony, you said in your last testimony that. that it was humane. So I would ask you, it is, is it your opinion, safest, is it still your opinion that a DNA abortion is humane? It's the safest and most common procedure used in the second trimester. But you won't answer the question, and I, I fully, I'll let me just say, I'm going to move on, but Absolutely. I fully understand why you won't answer the no, question. I, I would ask only that you ask yourself procedure. after this committee hearing why you wouldn't answer the question. You're Mrs. Altman, Dr. Altman, would you answer I'd the like question? I'd like to answer the question that you posed to me. I'm going to move on, m'lady. Uh, um, okay. Dr. Altman, would you answer the question? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. I tried. No, you didn't. It is. I think she answered the question. Yeah, you didn't hear it, but she did answer. Uh, the gentleman says. Thank you. It is from Arizona not, controls time. It is one of the most in, inhumane procedures I can imagine, and the only reason we have tolerated it is to allow women to have that convenience. There you go. Amazing, amazing video coming from Capitol here yesterday at the House Judiciary committee hearing on hr 490 house uh, the the uh, heartbeat protection act the heartbeat bill has made history by being introduced for the first time in the u.s congress and proving to us that history is repeating itself uh you know tret franks nailed her good on that one didn't he by by referring to the written uh, op opinion of justice anthony kennedy who basically just took the words of, of Carhartt, who's an abortionist, a, a late-term abortion butcher in Maryland, talking about what a d &E procedure is and describing it, using then and asking her if it's humane, and then her wiggling and squirming in her seat, eventually saying that it's humane. I mean, can you believe this? Again, science deniers, reality deniers, who have to say, that this is humane or else they've got a problem. To admit that dismembering a baby is inhumane, uh, it, it basically uh, causes their entire argument to collapse. And she wasn't gonna allow that to happen no matter what. Now, thank God that Trent Franks moved on uh, to the pro-life representative there and her testimony, realizing that uh, women do this because they wanna live a particular way. Uh, describing a DNA, I think, was masterful by Trent Franks, a great pro-life champion in the United States Congress. Um, and, uh, you know, it reminds me of the scripture uh, where Paul talks about that in the end times that people will, quote, lack natural affection. And if anything exemplifies that, this testimony does by this abortion advocate. After watching, well, actually she didn't watch the, uh, the ultrasound, but after the ultrasound of Lincoln Miller being presented to the hearing, and after the uh, description of a d and &E dismemberment abortion, this woman lacks natural affection for babies. I mean, it's normal for human beings to love babies. But as I've said before, abortion advocates hate them. There's no other way to put it. They hate them. And they hate them to the degree that they think that dismembering a baby is humane. Now, I've said this before and I'll say it again. History was made in Washington, D.C. yesterday. If you don't believe me, 
When people say we never want this to happen again when we talk about the Holocaust, the fact of the matter is it's happening again. The fact of the matter is that there are millions of Americans who know exactly what we're doing, who know that the preborn are human, that they're persons at conception, who have seen ultrasound videos of their own children or generally just in the public uh, sphere or forum, who yet deny what's going on. And it's the same thing that happened in Germany in 1945. And folks, we put a video together years ago that compared the Holocaust and the response of Germans to the Holocaust. And we compared that to the response of Americans to the death camps. And the question is asked, never again. Go ahead and play that video clip if you would, Mr. Producer. Now on the left there, people are being paraded through the death camps after liberation, after the Holocaust. On the right, you have the March for Life, walking by our gigantic video screen of abortion victims. And just like then, as it is today, people deny the truth of what's happening. Turn their avert their gaze just like they did in the hearing yesterday but then there are those who have a functioning functioning conscience that actually can understand exactly what's going on Oh Lord, we pray that uh, we once again would have a heart for the preborn and for those who suffer in our midst. And we would no longer deny what's happening. And we would repent of the shedding of innocent blood and that we'd come to the cross and ask for your forgiveness as a nation for the killing of preborn babies and that you could once again heal our land uh, of this great crime. So. We've talked about the ultrasound imagery. We've talked about how there are science deniers on the other side who choose to look the other way, who won't recognize the preborn baby in the womb, even when it's right in front of them, undeniable evidence of an ultrasound. And now we wanna talk about the snobs, the elitists, the, the folks that think they're beyond uh, uh, being held accountable in the United States Congress. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and cue up this video. Now, this is Representative Cohen, uh, who also sits on the committee. He's a Democrat, a pro-abortion Democrat. And he starts out his testimony by talking about how uh, the, the Declaration of Independence is outdated and how Thomas Jefferson was a man of his, uh, his time. But we've moved on since then. Go ahead. Go ahead and play that clip, uh, if you would. I love Thomas Jefferson's philosophies in many ways, but he was a man of his time. And liberty did not include African Americans who were slaves, and which he had many. And life didn't necessarily, uh, and liberty didn't include women who didn't have a right to vote and were second class citizens. I would suggest that the importance of life is, is there. And if you believe in life, you should believe in Medicaid, health care, nutrition oh my for gosh. people who are here, utility payments for people <laughs> who need it for safety. Handouts from the government. The eventuality of backroom abortions and where only the wealthy can afford to go to where that may be legal. 
All right, end it there, end it there. I mean, the, 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 here, here, this is the narrative coming from the American left, right? The America haters, those who hate our founding, hate our Declaration of Independence that Trent Fra Franks mentioned, that we're all created equal and endowed by our creator with certain, certain unalienable rights and the right to life was listed first among those. Uh, this man hates our founding, founding. He says Thomas Jefferson was a man of his time. In other words, because he held slaves, he had slaves, that we can throw out everything he wrote. That the Declaration of Independence, one of the most impactful documents ever penned by a human being, maybe outside the Bible itself, as far as impacting humanity and history, should be tossed aside because uh, th that some of the founders actually owned a few slaves and that our founding includes that we did not uh, franchise women. And therefore, because of that, we can't recognize that the preborn deserve equality under the law. I mean, this this is the kind of crap we hear from the, the American left and the abortion advocates in the U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, it's just this kind of stuff that, just imagine, uh, where did this guy go to high school and college, right? Uh, unfortunately, they're, they're the ones that get elected to the U.S. House on the Democrat side. Now, it gets even better because Star Parker, a pro-life champion African-American woman, shares how Dred Scott, a decision made you know in the 19 or in the 1860s regarding American slaves, uh, tracks almost identically with Roe v. Wade. And because of that comparison that she makes, she gets shouted down by this American hating representative Cohen. Uh, let's go ahead and play that clip from Star Parker. And others that index the same comparison, how did this come about? Others have looked at it as well. And in fact, when you put the Dred Scott decision next to the Roe v. Wade decision, they read almost verbatim. I'd like to also address um, something that was brought up earlier, if I may, when it comes to uh, mixing the abortion issue with uh, the challenges that we face in many of our hard-hit communities. I feel it disingenuous that the issues of Medicaid would come up and other opportunities for us to readdress what has happened and broken down in our most distressed zip codes, the way that Planned Parenthood specifically targets these uh, particular zip codes with abortion. Abortion is a leading cause of death in the black go community ahead, Go ahead today. and stop there for Since a minute, uh, Mr. Producer. What I wanna do, she talks about Planned Parenthood. We all know the history of Margaret Sanger and how uh, you know abortion advocates and Planned Parenthood have been targeting minority communities since the beginning. Uh, well, you know it's still going on today. If you would put up that tweet yesterday, this is from Planned Parenthood talking about how African American or it, it's safer for an African American woman to kill her baby than to bring a baby to birth. Look at this. This is this isn't you know 1930. This isn't the 1950s. This is 2017. This is from Planned Parenthood's black community, speaking to the black community, Twitter account. If you're a black woman in America, it's just statistically safer to have an abortion than to carry a pregnancy to term or give birth. First of all, where, where do they get that information? And it basically is saying it's better off, women are better off to kill their babies if they're African-American than to bring them to term, which is what Star Parker deals with here in the remainder of her testimony. And because of that, she's shouted down by this American-hating, God-hating, life-hating representative uh, from the, uh, the U.S. House of Representatives. Go ahead and play the rest of the clip, if you would. was legalized 20 million humans have been killed inside of the womb of black women and then on halloween planned parenthood tweets out that the black women are safest if they abort their child rather than bring it there to she, term there she goes. Uh, to the gentleman from texas who brought up margaret sanger the founder of planned parenthood i think that it is important that we put in record that the needs of those that are most vulnerable in society uh, cannot be addressed with abortion. Abortion feeds a narrative that women are victims. Should, no, that she's had no six abortions. And as a result of this narrative being forced down into our hardest hit communities, we are seeing now recklessness in sexual activity and marriage has collapsed. In the 50s, 70% of black 
adults were married. Today, that number is 30 percent. This is causing a lot more social pathologies that have to be addressed through different types of legislation, uh, not the heartbeat bill. The heartbeat bill is to protect the innocent. Chair, I recognize the gentleman from Tennessee, the ranking member. Thank you. Firstly, we're in filler time waiting for somebody to come testify. I would ask that we allow Ms. Jayapal to do filler as well as, as, well as the, the chair. And I'd also like to say that I am not disingenuous about anything I say about Medicaid or Medicare or LIHEAP or SNAP programs. And to suggest I'm disingenuous shows your ignorance or your absolute inability to deal with Congress people the way they should. I believe in those issues and I think they're proper and to say I'm disingenuous is just wrong and I expect an apology. Uh, I would <laughs> ask for an apology from the gentleman from Tennessee <laughs> calling our witness ignorant when it seems to me she has a whole lot more knowledge and wisdom. She's ignorant about me. <laughs> You're both out of order. A, a and, fine admission uh, on your part. Given the uh, lack of civility before this committee, this concludes today's hearing. Chairman. Thanks to all of our witnesses for attending. Without objection, all members will have five legislative days to submit additional written records from all the right, witnesses. There you go. Or additional <laughs> that, that's the clip that has made the circuit on social media of uh, Representative Cohen losing it with Star Parker. Star Parker, African American pro life activist, who, by the way, wasn't pro-life. I mean, she had six abortions. She admits to that. And she was on the left. I mean, she was she she was for all of this stuff until she found out that abortion is really black genocide, that it's the targeting of African-Americans, uh, as Margaret Sanner, Sanger la laid out way back in the 1920s and 30s and how it's decimating the African-American community. And, and a couple of things. First of all, when he says that it's filler time and therefore the chair, who's, by the way, a Republican, and he's a chair because they won the election. Uh, the majority is a Republican. The House of Representatives is held in the majority by Republicans. Therefore, they get to chair these committees. And because they chair these committees, they can set the rules and, and you know give people to, time to speak and so forth. So if he didn't like the rules, then he needs to start winning elections. That's number one. Number two, he talks about how it's disingenuous, disingenuous. Uh, uh, you know, then that's an incorrect characterization of conflating. Now, get this. This guy wants to conflate Medicaid, Medicare, SNAP programs, food stamps, all the government giveaways. He wants to conflate or at least put those on an equivalent playing field with the wholesale slaughter of preborn babies in the womb, the dismembering, decapitation, and dis disemboweling of human beings in the womb. He wants to put those on an even scale. A false equivalency, I would say. And I think she's right to say that that's disingenuous. Uh, but, but this is what people get away with. This is what people get away with in the legislature who say, we shouldn't be talking about this whether it be the uh, heartbeat bill or the Down syndrome bill in the Ohio legislature or any other pro-life legislation, because we're wasting our time on the, the issue of the unborn. We ought to be talking about giving away things to uh, the, the less fortunate, suppose, supposedly. Uh, he, she was right to call him disingenuous. She was right, and he acted as often Democrats do, liberals in Washington, uh, like a snob. And he said that you don't know how to address a congressperson like me. Like, you know, he's here and she's there. And somehow she needs to talk entirely respectful to him, but it's okay for him to call her ignorant. Uh, I think he needs to understand something, that the Congress works for the American people, not the other way around. Uh, that Star Parker is a constituent of someone in Congress, and therefore she is the one in charge. You know, we, the people, supposedly, right, are, are the ones who run the government, who are the government, not this elitist snob, Representative Cohen, who, who you know, who, who doesn't know how to contain himself when someone has an opposing opinion. So uh, that's the thing that made the rounds and, 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 and just showed the true colors of many abortion advocates in Washington, D.C. So to wrap this up, what I want to do, we're going to talk, we, we talked about the historic 
nature of the heartbeat bill that it's been introduced in the United States House of Representatives and the Judiciary Committee, the first time that it's ever been done, the most protective bill that's out there currently on the federal landscape. And we talked about how in 2011, that was introduced in the Ohio legislature by, uh, by Janet Porter also. We talked about the history of this and how history is repeating itself. What I'd like to do, I'm going to I'm going to end by playing the clip, the clip of yours truly talking about the the introduction, the first introduction of the heartbeat bill in the Ohio legislature in 2011, when we stood on the south steps of the Ohio uh, state house and talked about the first uh, time that the the heartbeat bill had ever been introduced at the state level. If you would, Mr. Producer, go ahead and play that clip. This is yours truly, partially anyway, of the, the speech that I gave in 2011 and how God has been faithful to bring this to a place now where it's being introduced at a federal level. And last year in 2016, it was one signature away from being put into law here in the state of Ohio. Go ahead and play that clip. Dr. King said this when he was addressing his uh, detractors, those who disagreed with him in his movement. He said this. As he related, as he as he responded to the question of untimeliness, quote: "This is from the letter from the Birmingham jail. We know that through painful experience, that freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. <laughs> Frankly, I've yet to see a direct action campaign that was well timed," he said. For, for years now, I've heard the word, wait, wait. We hear the words wait, don't we? I've heard the words wait. It rings in the ear of every Negro with piercing familiarity. This word wait almost always means what? Never, never. And that justice too long delayed is justice denied. The word wait rings in the ears of every preborn child in America. And the time is now to do what's right. The time is now to pass this legislation. The time is now to bring this to the House floor for a vote. The time is now to move this over to the Senate. The time is now for the governor to take a position. It's time is now. Justice too long delayed is justice denied. All right, Mr. Producer, you so can Dad, end it there. Uh, I guess you could say prophetic words. Uh, 2011, when the heartbeat bill was introduced to the Ohio legislature, and we still hear the same arguments coming from those within our movement who say it's not time. It's not time to ban 92% of all abortions. It's not time to directly attack, frontally attack Roe versus Wade, which is what the heartbeat bill would do. It's not time to pass legislation that's going to be held up in the courts as so-called unconstitutional. It's not time because we're chipping away at abortion incrementally uh, and we're saving lives as we go. It's not time because we're not ready to pass a law like this. It's not time because our legislature's not ready to get it done. It's not time because it's going to set a bad precedent if it gets struck down in the courts. It's not time if the U.S. Supreme Court reviews abortion when it reviews the heartbeat bill once passed at a federal or state level because they might, pass, they might rule against it. That's why I read the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So those, those words, it's not time, ring in the ears of every pre-born baby that's been waiting since 1973 for liberation, for emancipation. It is time. Time is now. I don't have uh, a, a crystal ball. No one does. But the, if the time is not now, when we have both houses of Congress in the hands of so-called pro-life Republicans, if the time is not now that we have a president in the White House who is pro-life, who has sworn to 
to, to sign pro-life legislation, then when is the time? If the time is not now, when we just put another U.S. Supreme Court justice on the court who is uh, a strict constructionist, who might, hopefully, if we're given an opportunity to review Roe v. Wade, would strike it down and send it back to the courts, then when is it time? It's time to support the federal heartbeat bill, the Heartbeat Protection Act, H.R. 490. And it's time to get this done in the state of Ohio and force our governor, Governor Kasich, to sign it into law. The time is now. The time is always right to do right. And so, folks, let's get behind H.R. 490 at the federal level. Let's support the Heartbeat Protection Act at the federal level. And let's support the Ohio Heartbeat Bill. Folks, we're going to be talking about more, more about this as it makes its way through the Congress and hopefully comes to a vote in the House of Representatives, goes over to the Senate, and eventually, hopefully soon, would be signed by President Trump into law. Let's get it done. Let's get the Heartbeat Protection Act done on the federal level, and let's get the Heartbeat Bill done here at the state level. So, folks, be tuning in 1 p.m. Eastern Time every, every week here, every Thursday, on Facebook and other media platforms for the Mark Harrington Show, your radio activist. We'll see you next time. God bless you. God bless America. And remember America to bless God. You've been listening to Mark Harrington, your radio activist. For more information on how to become a witness against the evil, evil plague in America, call Created Equal at 614-269-7808, 614-269-7808, or go online to createdequal.net, createdequal.net. Be sure to tune to The Mark Harrington Show next time for your marching orders in the culture war.